Hey guys, what's up? I thought I'd talk a little bit today about um, sort of some of the things that you can do to make yourself feel better um, when you're anxious, some of the things I did. Um, and yeah, if you give them a go, they won't necessarily cure you, but they certainly put you on the right path. Uh, number one, most important thing for me when I suffered with massive panic attacks was exercise. Um, if your body's panicking, it's because your heart's racing, and if your heart's racing, it's usually because you've got too much cortisol and adrenaline. Um, so naturally, the obvious thing to do to cure that problem would be to exercise to burn off that energy. It can be any form of exercise. Generally, it's stuff that gets your heart rate going, though, so it really burns it off. A walk, sometimes people can even find they can be out the walk and have a panic attack, but I've never spoken to a single person who's had a panic attack whilst um, doing heavy endurance exercise. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, and I'm not saying... It couldn't happen in certain situations. Maybe it's because people that are anxious enough to do that just don't exercise in the first place. But certainly for me, when I couldn't sit still um, and I couldn't really think about anything other than full-blown panic 24-7, the only time I got any respite was when I was doing sort of hardcore physical exertion. And the upside of doing that as well is that you're going to be creating far more serotonin and dopamine. You're going to increase your mood over time it you relief in do, release endorphins um, so it's not just the benefit of um, sort of immediate effect benefit so to speak where you're lessening the, the feel of panic in you and the adrenaline but it's also that long-term thing of you're getting fitter you so therefore you'll probably start to look better your skin will become healthier um, if you're if you've put on a little bit of weight because you binge eat or you've had quite a sedentary life because you're too scared to go out, you'll lose some of that weight. Um, it can feel like the worst thing to do in the world, but unless you've got a health problem, um, obviously get that checked first. Then, but unless you have, there's no chance that if your problem is pure anxiety, that doing exercise is going to make you worse. It will definitely 100% improve your mood. Uh, the second thing for me, which is massive, is diet. Um, that's obvious, again, I think, for most people, but it's avoid sugar. Um, or not necessarily avoid sugar, but massively decrease sugar so you don't get sugar spikes and surges in energy. Um, avoid things that maybe, uh, if you eat in large doses for anyone, they might cause a bit more added stomach upset because you suffer with anxiety. Your stomach is naturally going to be a little bit more jiffy than other people's because your fight or flight's going all the time so your stomach isn't isn't always working in a, in, in a way that's particularly great so you can eat things to help that because obviously naturally with a with anxiety you get acid reflux things like that so you can eat foods that help with that apples um, although apples can actually make it worse but apple cider vinegar is a is a great example um, there's plenty of foods that help with acid reflux um, the other thing you can do is eat foods high in B12 and potassium, so things like bananas, um, almonds, um, yeah, various foods that have huge benefits to your mental well-being. You can find a few, fair few books online as well, which which are called, um, I can't remember the name of it, I will come back to that, but I have a book that's called um, Eating for Your Mind or something, and you'll find it on Amazon, and that's fantastic for telling you the foods to eat to improve your mood. Um so yeah that's another thing you can do the third one for me was educating yourself now that's not obsessing over it it's not sitting on youtube typing in i've got a headache um is this a sign of a tumor um if you're hunting for answers to something you think you have or a problem you think you have that doesn't actually exist you'll always find answers that that complement your beliefs which will make you think god christ i have actually got it when actually um, what you need to be taking is your doctor's advice who said, no, um, that's not true. You don't have that. Um, you have anxiety, health anxiety, depression, any of the other things which can all cause symptoms similar to other pretty horrible illnesses. So that's not to say there isn't the odd occasion where someone might not have that. But if your doctors confirm you haven't, then consider yourself lucky and um, and then start putting the steps in place to improve your mental well-being and then hopefully those things will improve in time. The fourth thing I would always recommend would be speak to someone. It is true a problem shared is a problem halved um, and have people who know about your problem who you know you can call. Don't be ashamed of, of how you're feeling. Um, 
the more times you talk about it, the more you kill the the, the shame and the embarrassment around it, and the easier the problem becomes, even if it doesn't immediately go away. Quite often with people that come to therapy, I'd recommend um, they write a little a little graph down of triggers for how they're feeling, um, what their response to those triggers normally is, um, a healthy response that they can do instead of the unhealthy one they might do, which might be drinking, it might be pacing backwards and forwards, it might be not going out. So instead we come up with a thing, you know, some healthy things that push the boundaries but are actually good for them rather than unhealthy things that minimise your life. Um, so that's that's also um, very important, letting people know how you feel and having people you trust who you tell about it. Um, don't live with feeling awful and keeping it from people because you're embarrassed because I've done that for a long time and you feel really alone and I'm not saying you don't still feel alone when you tell people but you're making little steps towards removing the shame around it and the majority of disorders stem from self-esteem um, and that comes back to exercise if you're fitter and you look weller your self-esteem will naturally be higher you'll probably think better of yourself your mood will be elevated therefore you won't think as negatively about yourself because of that aspect of it your diet will be better so you'll be improving chemicals and vitamins that help improve your mood also it's it's not a one-pronged attack it's a, a multiple pronged attack um, now i say the last thing really and it's not even one thing it's a mixture of things but they are self-care so it's just laying on the bed and allowing yourself to slow down, even if it feels really uncomfortable, sitting with the discomfort, deep breathing, even for an hour if it takes an hour to calm you down, but not moving, not letting it win. Sit there, feel the discomfort, know that it can't hurt you, and maybe ask your partner to, I don't know, stroke your hair if that relaxes you. It makes me angry, but it relaxes some people. Um, another thing you can do is obviously meditation massively helpful for me I mentioned it in the last video I done a few people didn't like that video I thought it was just me having a chat about my life and and introducing myself so if there's anything I'm doing wrong or you think I should add to these and you've watched them give me a shout in the comments I want to know I want to know how to improve them because um, at the minute I'm just going from past experience I know the one thing I need to improve on is my ability to drag out a conversation and go off in tangents um, so yeah, anyway, meditation, like I said, is another huge um, self-care thing I do. Having a warm bath, um, reading a good book, um, replacing those spaces of time in your life where you'll just sit there and ruminate over things that ha could have been or that will be and just living in the moment. Um, some people like to look at things around the room. I make a load of bracelets. These are all lava rocks. Another great idea is... Um, Get yourself a lava rock bracelet off Amazon for a couple of quid um, or um, or make yourself one if you've got the patience and you're willing to sit there and do it. Get yourself some essential oils and put them on that bracelet. When you feel real panicky, shut your eyes and sniff it really hard for, for two or three minutes. Um, just get Start triggering your sense of smell. Right, So your brain is thinking about what you're smelling as well as what you're feeling. So it's taking a bit of attention away from the discomfort in your body and focusing more on something else for a while. That is a great thing to do, which is why diffusers are good. Um, not only that, the essential oils have great health benefits and they help calm you anyway. You know, hot water bottles, a warm bed. Um, there's so many things you can do to make the situation better and it might feel uncomfortable sitting in that situation at first. But that's because you've told yourself you're not safe there. Um, the longer you sit there and nothing bad happens, the more you prove to your brain you are actually safe. And you'll only achieve recovery once you stop fearing the way you feel. And I know that's very easy to say and not that easy to do. But it is, it is easy um, to put those methods in place. It's whether or not you can be strong enough to achieve them. And if you are, you're... You've, you've almost got there so just stick with it and keep doing them um, you know mood sheets are great because they can help you realize the moments that you forget because in in the moment when you're very anxious or you're very depressed you don't look back and think of the good times you look back and just think that it's been one long bad time when actually you do get those windows of happiness but you're just not all with it so you just don't you don't feel that you've got them 
if you've written them down, you can look back and you can think, oh, Christ, actually, I did say I felt a bit better for, for 20 minutes that day. And then if you can look back and think, what was I doing before that that might have done that? Had I just forgotten? Had I just relaxed for a few seconds? And then it self's proof that, again, it's all in your head and and you just need to need to let go. You need to allow allow the discomfort, physical, mental, whatever it is, to be there and not give it any power because the more power you give it, the stronger it gets. And that's it really, that, that's a few things that I do, but I can't stress exercise enough. Um, exercise, diet, and I suppose the last thing I should mention is, is sleep. If you struggle with sleep, that does add obviously to your problems. Get to bed earlier. If it takes you four hours to sleep, go to bed at eight o'clock. Don't go to bed at 11.30 at night and wonder why you're still awake at three, because you know it takes you that long to get to sleep. And if you consistently go to bed earlier, so that you get to sleep at a normal time so your body is used to sleeping at night time which is good for for your body because your arcadian rhythm sleeps better at that time of the day which is why you get jet lag when you have to change um, you know time zones um so yeah sleep is well, massively important and again that comes back to meditation if you struggle with sleep find a good app i'll suggest a few on here there's one actually on Spotify and on YouTube. Um, it's called Sleep Hypnosis by Positive Life Therapy. If you type Positive Life Therapy into Spotify or you type it into Google, they will come up. They're absolutely fantastic. It's the first one I ever started listening to and the first couple of times I was skeptical because it's the first meditation I ever gave a chance. But if you struggle with sleep, sit through that. I've recommended it to many people <clears throat> and I've not had anyone say that it hasn't helped some people it's certainly not cured but it's helped everyone and i generally believe that that's an honest bit of feedback from them so yeah sleep another really important one if you're not getting sleep everything's just going to feel worse anyway that's everything and um i am going to do another video again soon i didn't get a lot of likes or comments on the last one and i think a lot of them probably just random people clicking on it because I pay to advertise on Google. So it'd be nice if we do get some genuine people watching these videos. Share it with your friends if they have anxiety or depression. Get them to come and have a have a look at the video. Get them to ask me some questions. I'm fairly confident I can answer most of them and I'm fairly confident I can make them feel better about the situation they found themselves in. So come on, give me a go. Speak to you soon. Bye.